What do you think about the uh, the story? I don't know if you've heard, I'm sure you've heard of it, but huh. Annie Jacobson talks about in her book, Area 51, she has a source, a major source for, yeah. who was an EG&G engineer. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, uh, I know EG&G. Yeah, he, yeah. he told her, uh, he was like towards the very end of his life when uh, he was giving her information for her book. But he said that the Roswell crash was a drone piloted by Stalin um, containing a uh, a humanoid. There was a guy, a Nazi guy that Stalin got uh, that was like a, I, I always forget his name, but he was like a surgery guy. He was in charge of like doing all this crazy like surgical experiments, manipulating people. Mm -hmm. And he did this surgical manipulation on like kids with Down syndrome and made them look like aliens and crashed them in there to sow panic and chaos in the what, US. What do I think about that? And then, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> and then... Um, he she went back towards the end of her research years later and she goes she goes um why wouldn't you say something about this she's like this makes them look terrible if you guys found out the truth and could could find evidence proving that stalin was behind this why wouldn't you do that and the eg and g engineer said because we started doing the same thing he he literally said that they started doing the surgical stuff, experimenting on kids. It's all a total brain fart. Total. I mean, you you can get extraordinarily intricate stories by people who are total psychopaths, uh, and they're completely convincing because they even some of them believe it themselves. It's not true. I've, I I am the guy. I'm the guy that helped uh, expand the the telegram in the hand of General Ramey. The, the famous picture of him kneeling down next to the weather balloon, you know, kneeling down there, and you right. can look at he's got he's got a, a telegram, a cable in his hand. You can see it. <laughs> I always saw. I said that guy's got a fucking cable of some sort in his hand there. I, I, I you can't read it from right. the photograph. Right. And so, like 1995, I'm doing a talk, giving everybody a briefing on the John Mack case. Uh -huh. You know, uh, that was still underway at that time. I'm out at the International UFO Congress out in Laughlin, Nevada. And a guy comes up to me after I do my my briefing on the on the Mac case, and he says, uh, "Mr. Sheehan," he said, uh, "I've got something really important I need to talk with you about. Uh, could you come up and meet me up in my room?" And I went, uh, "I think I better bring somebody with me." So I get another friend of mine. We go up, uh, and he says, "I think I've found the uh, photographer from the Roswell newspaper." who the editor called him at 2 o'clock in the morning after the July uh, 8th, you know, headline, banner headline in the Roswell paper that everybody's seen about flying saucer, that they found a flying saucer, and it went out over the AP wires, and everybody was going ballistic, right? And, and so he gets a call at 2 o'clock in the morning from the editor of the paper and says that General Ramey has flown in from Texas, and he's uh, demanding that he send, we send a photographer out right now because they want to get the photographs uh, uh, and put them on the front page of the paper for the morning. And he goes out, and here's Ramey, you know, uh, with uh, uh, with uh, Marcel and the rest of the guys. Yeah. And they're all still up, and they've got a weather balloon kind of spread out on the floor. Uh, and he's kneeling down next to the weather balloon, and he's got this cable in his hand. You can see the, the telegram. Uh, and so this guy says, I think I may have found the, the photographer that took the picture. <clears throat> and I said, great. I said, if you, if you can find out and it's the right guy, see if he's got the negatives. If he's got the negatives, we might be able to digitize them and blow these things up and we can read the telegram, right? So he does. He goes and finds the guy. Sure enough, it's the guy. Sure enough, he's got the, he's got the negatives. Sure enough, we get them blown up and digitized, right? <clears throat> and it says right in them, we had to do some computer stuff with, you know, where the consonants and vowels were to be able to fill in where some of the wrinkles were that were in the thing. But <clears throat> it says, bring the disk to right field and bring the bodies, okay? Now, and so that we, we know that it was real. It wasn't any weather balloon, you know? The, and, and all the guys, the guys that are there, I mean, they know what a weather balloon looks like. Well, that story would fit in with the eg and G engineer no, story. It's not, a, it's not even close to a weather balloon. I mean, this was no, a no, huge no. crap. He said it was a drone. He said it was like a flying saucer that they wow. literally piloted with the bodies. Anybody can make anything up. Anybody yeah. can make anything up, and we've seen them. I mean, look at Corey Good. 
the guy that I told you about, Corey Good, went on and on for dozens of appearances. He went on and right. went into great detail about how we had interstellar craft. Yeah, but this this source, he was completely, he was a, a confidential source. He was completely remained anonymous. She never named the guy or anything. And she said that he, like, why would he admit the fact that he went and did it too? Do, 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 you, realize, do you realize how many people that have come to me to tell me that they knew what the Watergate burglary was about? And, uh, and what the Kennedy who killed Kennedy, you know, and all that, and the people hiding in the drain and all that shit. I mean, they go on and on and on, you know. Right. And and it's just that that's what I'm saying. Why you have to have the ability to. I mean, we we could slap this guy on a on a psychological stress evaluator, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, th it's just that they know it isn't true. That we've got we've got like a dozen witnesses. Uh, who have who have participated in that? Who saw the crash debris? You know, and it's not a weather balloon at all. You know, and that they that they and they've got they've got multiple I agree, it bodies. Definitely wasn't a weather balloon. They got multiple bodies. You know, and they they didn't they didn't you know find a bunch of people that were kind of human mutants and they kind of operated on them and put them in a in a weather balloon and flew or a drone and flew. They didn't even have drones then. <laughs> you know. Well, they had the Hort was stuff the Horton brothers were working on the the Horton. Have you seen the 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 flying saucer type object that the Horton brothers developed? Well, there the, there were a number of them that were were trying to be developed. The the Russians, the the Nazis were working on right exactly, which may well have uh, have been a result of the the craft in 1933 mm -hmm. that was recovered in 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 Italy. Right. So, but but they weren't able they weren't able to figure out the technology of this thing, you know that uh, yeah see that's it there. So this, See, what are we looking at right that's, here? That's the telegram right there. This is the telegram that was in the guy's hand yes, in the photograph. Yes, in Ramey's right there. See it? Yeah. Oh, wow. See it? That's not a weather balloon. That's Victims. not a conversation about a weather balloon. Right, no. They're talking about the disc. Where does it say Wright Patterson? It says Wright Field. Oh, Wright Field. See? That's what it was. It was Wright Field at that time. It wasn't Wright Patterson until oh, later. Oh wow! But it's take it to Wright Field, and here's here's all the stuff. It, see. Yep, Wright Field. And they talk about we're going to send out send out a weather balloon story for a cover. Huh. See that? Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 It was so, definitely a. Uh, it was definitely a cover up. Yeah. So in so and it's it's one of those it's one of those kind of things where. Where you know, not in a thousand years would they think that you can see this? Would you would ever be able to see the, the telegram that he had in his hand? Right. You know. And so but I we, say that nobody nobody's going to be smart enough to to do that mm -hmm. to have a fake telegram in his hand uh, and think that you know, thirty years later somebody's going to find the technology to read it. You know, mm. it's, you know, it's, it's just like, you know, eventually we'll be able to t get the Zapruder film and we'll be able to have a technology that can track the heat signatures of the bullets in, in the emulsion on, on the negatives. They're gonna, we're going to be able to do that. Yeah. And we'll be able to find the actual heat, heat signatures of the bullets. And so you'll know exactly where the bullets came from. Yeah. And by that time, they'll all be dead. And, and you know, that's, that's. Uh, what is that? What did that say, Steve? However, this book written... Oh, this is... Okay, this, this is talking is, about the EG&G engineer, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, in this book written by Andy Jacobson, uh, a respected investigator reporter offers such contrasting explanation of the, for the Roswell mystery that I suggest you clutch something solid right now. Yeah, this is what I just explained to you. Um, according to the Telegraph... Jacobson suggests that the flying object crash into uh, was an earthly machine. She also reported the suggestion it was sent by Stalin. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, down here is where it gets interesting. Um, maybe it's right here. She's in children. Stalin, yeah, yeah. Stalin apparently believed that it could have been said they sent a plane full of these children created with the already exiled Ming Mingel. Mingel, that was the guy's name, the Nazi. Mengele. Mengele. Yeah. Mengele's help over to the U.S. in order to create mass hysteria. However, the remote piloted plane, which wasn't a flying saucer, crashed. But yeah, so so the Horton brothers and a bunch of these guys that were working with the Nazis, they had all kinds of crazy sci-fi looking shit they were working on that looked like flying saucers. No, I mean what what I'm saying is that we've got we've got 40, you know, above top secret witnesses testifying to the recovery of the UFOs. Mm -hmm. You know, and that these are not these are not uh, craft so this, made by the Soviets, or so it goes back ours. to my 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 original question: yes. Is if we have forty of these people, do you really think we're going to get these people to let the cat out of the bag? 
They've already given it. They've already given sworn testimony to the Senate Intelligence Committee under oath. I'm talking about the the um, the private contractors, Battelle. I'm talking about these these companies. Well, they're, they're, once once we get subpoena power to go after them, and you know they, I can tell you, you know they that people all the time don't want to talk. Uh, they have every, in any case you're going to do are going to lie, are going to cheat and hide the stuff. They're going to do all that. Mm -hmm. You have to have professionals that know how to get that stuff, mm -hmm. you know. And as long as the Congress has made the decision that they're going to get it, they'll get it. 